Welcome to the All Plan Quick Start Lesson 6. In this lesson, we will look at how to create your own custom wizard and how to create and modify views and sections. Let's start with a brief overview on creating your own wizard. Wizards are a powerful tool in All Plan, and using them can save a lot of time on projects. They can be created at any time and also built up from an existing project. For this quick start building, we'll use the roof elements to create a new wizard. Open the building structure and set the drawing file for wizards to active and drawing file 301 roof plan finish to edit mode. If you previously worked through lessons 1 through 5, you can also use drawing file 300 that you created. However, if you have not replicated the model, you can start with the finished roof plan in the saved project. When creating a wizard, make sure the active drawing file is empty and will only contain the information you want saved to the wizard. The entire drawing file will be created as a wizard. You can create elements from scratch to save to your wizard or use existing elements in a project. A useful tip in All Plan is that you can quickly model off existing elements by double right clicking on that element. For example, when I double right click on this wall, it will activate the wall command and all properties will match those from the selected existing wall. This helps to quickly model similar objects within a project. We can use this to build up our wizard. Draw a small portion of the wall off to the side. This is what it'll look like in the wizard. We can repeat this process with any existing item in the model. Double right click on the interior wall and again draw a portion under the other wall that we just did. Do the same for the roof slab and draw a small portion of the slab under the walls. Add text to your wizard to help identify the elements and also to use within your plans. We can do this using the label command and then we can use copy, paste, and easily edit these elements using basic CAD commands. You can also create associative labels that pull information about the element attributes. These could be element size, for example, a 6x6 footing, it can be thickness, or a unique identifier like C4 for a column name. These are attributes that are manually assigned to members and the labels will automatically update based on the attribute that you input. Creating associative labels is outside the scope of the Quick Start Guide, but feel free to contact us if you'd like more information. Dimension lines are another great element to set up in a wizard. Work through the properties to get the dimensions looking correct. Then place them on the plan where they will eventually go in the wizard. Note that you can also add text to the dimensions, or you can have just the basic dimensions as well. Once complete, we can now save the wizard. Only the information modeled in this currently active drawing file will be saved to the wizard. Go to the All Plan drop-down icon and choose Save and Show a Copy as a Wizard. Click OK to confirm the message if you receive it. In Windows Explorer on the left-hand side, make sure to click on Project Wizards. Give the wizard file a name, for example, Roof Wizard. The next option allows you to create a new group. In this case, we'll be adding the wizard as another tab under the Quick Start Wizard. Therefore, simply click Cancel. In the wizard, right-click on the tab and choose Open Wizard. Go to Project Wizards and select the wizard that you saved. A new tab is now created in the Quick Start Wizard group, and you can use the elements we just created as a wizard. Next, we'll talk about creating views and sections. Views are quick and easy to create in all plan. These can be plan views, elevations, or isometric views. In the sections group of the reinforcement ribbon, click the black drop-down arrow to select the Create View command. The palette on the left will now contain all the properties and commands with an intuitive interface for generating the views. Use the graphics to select the view, then hover over the viewport to get a preview. The arrows in the graphics will give you an elevation or isometric view looking at the building in the direction the arrow is pointing. Clicking in the square will give you an overall plan view. You can turn hidden lines on or off by clicking on the dotted lines in the square. There are many options for displaying the views, turning on or off different layers, scaling the drawings, and formatting how the lines will look. There is also an option for surface representation. 
Notice in the preview the elements are filled with a concrete shading. We can turn this on or off under the Surface Elements section. At the bottom of the Generate View palette, there is a Save Drawing File command. You can place this view both in this active drawing and in other drawings. Here we can select one of the derived drawings that we've generated for plan views. Once you've modeled the structure, it's good practice to work in views to add information like reinforcing, dimensions, and texts. Save this view to the derived foundation plan drawing file 500. Now click in the graphics to place the view. Notice now in this view we can see the curb on top of the strip footing and the representations of the lines are shown correctly with hidden lines where appropriate. We can easily modify the view and how it looks by double clicking on the view border. This will open the modify view palette where we can make changes to how this view looks. One thing we can do is add drawing files to be displayed. For example, if we want to show some elements from the second floor plan, like columns and walls, we can add drawing file 201 from the building structure. Note, you always have to click apply at the bottom of the palette to confirm the command and update the model. Now suppose you want to show the columns but not the other information in the drawing. We can easily add or remove individual elements from view. Click on the Remove Add Elements command. Now in the model, select all the elements that you want removed from this view. Use the tooltip to make sure that you're selecting the correct elements. We can remove the second floor slab, slab openings, and the second floor beams. Once done, you will have to right click to confirm everything that's been selected, and then click Apply in the palette to finish. The drawing file now shows only the columns and the walls above. Another powerful tool in modifying views is the ability to turn on or off the visibility of layers. Working with layers in AllPlan gives you complete control over the entire model and how the finished documents will look. In the Layer Active command, set the layers considered to user-defined layer settings. You can now go through and turn on or off the visibility of different layers. Sections are just as easy to create in AllPlan. There are two types of sections that you can generate, basic or advanced. The basic is similar to the views in that it will quickly generate a plan or elevation view, but in this case, you specify the location of the view. For example, if you had an area on plan that you wanted to blow up and show in more detail, you could quickly take a basic plan section of that area. Select the plan cut from the graphics in the model, define the region by clicking opposite corners and then press escape on your keyboard to confirm the area. This creates the view that you can then place in the drawing file. The same could be done for an elevation view. Choose the elevation cut from the graphics. This time, define the line of where the section cut will go through and press escape. Then define the width of the section cut and that really will show how much information will be out of plane within that section. You can now see the section and place it in the drawing. The advanced sections work in a similar manner but provide you with more flexibility in generating the section and what information is displayed. Additional options will become available once you've created the section and click on it to modify. When first generating the section, you can choose from a normal view or a free view. The free view allows you to create the section from any angle. And this is great if you have curved or sloping sides and you need the section to follow the direction of framing. To create the section, click on the two opposite corners to form a bounding box of what you want displayed and press escape to create the area. Now if you click inside the circle, you will generate a plan view of this area. Where you click will define the direction. The location is of the observer looking towards the area. If you click outside the circle, you will generate an elevation view of the section. Notice the observation line is perpendicular to the main coordinate XY system. If I now change to free, those lines are gone and I can click anywhere to define the direction of the observation. Another important property at this point is setting up the height extents of the section. And you can have the program automatically define the heights based on the elements in the section. If you uncheck this option, you can manually define reference heights. This is great for showing information at specific heights along the building. For example, if you are cutting a section at a balcony 
or some exterior support that did not span the entire height of the floor level and maybe didn't occur right at the floor level. You can also create a section that goes through the building with any shape, not necessarily a straight line. In this case, keep clicking to generate the next point and only press escape when you're done. Once modeled, we can easily modify section cuts by double-clicking on the external border. Similar to what we saw for the views, we can add or remove elements from the section, add or remove drawing files to include more elements, and modify the visibility of layers. Under Formats, we can control if edges and hidden lines will be displayed, and how they'll look based on pen settings, colors, and line types. We can also set the surface if we want to graphically display elements with fills and texture. There are actually two parts to a section, the clipping path and the viewport. We've been discussing the viewport which controls the elements and how they look. The clipping path is the boundary of what is contained in the section. Double click on the interior line to modify the properties of the clipping path. Here you can set the height of the section, select how the section will look in plan, and remove the clipping path altogether. Lastly, we can take a section within a section or view. And this works in the same way we've seen, except first you must select the section or view that you'll be working off of. In the section command, first click on the view that you want to work with. Then create the section as before. Notice that in this view, we turned on the visibility of columns. Therefore, in the new section, we also have the columns displayed. Also note that when we take a section from a view or a section, the section cut also displays in the model. One last comment on viewing sections. These are associative and exist in all views. Therefore, if you hover over the section, you can see it highlighted in the model in all views. See it here in the plan and in the 3D animation. You can also hover over any element in the section and see it in the model. This is extremely helpful while you're working to always know where you are in the model and what elements that you're working with. We encourage you to create a few sections on your own and work through modifying their appearance. That brings us to the end of Lesson 6 of the Quick Start Guide. In the next lesson, we'll learn how to generate 3D reinforcing in concrete members.